know, it's, uh, biblical scholars believe that Mark was actually the first gospel to be written. And that beginning of the gospel kind of sets the tone for the whole, uh, all four gospels. And that is the, I call it the mission statement of Jesus. And so I wanted to look at it. It's, uh, you know, Jesus had just finished his retreat in the desert. Uh, and then he sets out the heart of his message, which we see in all the gospels. And the heart is the time has come and the time is referred to as Kronos time, God's time. And the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. And this is a message you'll see throughout the gospels and even in the readings of uh, the letters of Paul and the others as well. So I wanna look at the gospel and what we mean by the kingdom of God. And then finally, repentance. Now gospel, the word here in gospel is in Greek is evangelio, from which we get the term evangelist, but it also means good news. And so what does Jesus mean by good news? Well, apparently the Greek word uh, that I learned last Tuesday during our Bible study is that uh, it isn't just good news like, wow, uh, something happened today and it was really good, or you know, uh, I got a letter from a friend that's really good news. It's something really profound. It's something like a battle won. And I, when I was thinking about that, I was thinking about, you all can uh, remember from TV, you weren't probably old enough, at the end of World War II, the, the uh, cheering when it was announced that the war was over, that we had won the war. And that's the kind of good news that Jesus is talking about. This is really good news. And, uh, and then and Jesus means, what is the good news? It's the kingdom of God is the good news. And so how good is the good news? Well, the kingdom of God in the Old Testament, uh, uh, it's, it's in the Jewish history, it was that idea that God was overseeing the people of Israel. He was with them in the desert. He helped them come out of slavery in Egypt. He was with them in the desert. God was taking care of them, and they perceived that as the kingdom. Now, what does Jesus mean in, in the uh, modern time or in the New Testament? And, and the term kingdom of God is also referred to as the reign of God. Now, the kingdom of God, um, it, it, it's interesting in the Gospels, it's hard to come down with a, a, a real good definition. In Luke, Jesus says, the coming of the kingdom of God cannot be observed and no one will announce it. Look, here it is, or there it is. For behold, the kingdom of God is among you. And so the kingdom of God is now, it's with us all. And I would argue that in our baptism, when we uh, fill you with the Holy Spirit, we're putting the kingdom of God in you at that time. But there's also that future sense of the kingdom of God, and that's referred to as the eschatology or the eschaton, life after death, that the coming of Jesus at the end time. And many biblical scholars will also use the term, uh, I, I love this, they refer to it as the already but not yet. It's here among us, but it's not fully with us all the time. Now Mark uh, also had an interesting idea in Mark's gospel that uh, one of the Pharisees had asked Jesus, what are the, the great commandments? And Jesus said to love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your might and to love your neighbor as yourself. And then the scribe said, you, you were right. And Jesus said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And so that's Jesus' idea of the kingdom of God is to love God with all your heart, all your might and all your soul and to love your neighbor as yourself. To be in the kingdom of God, just like basically any country, it's the way we live our lives, how we live our lives. And if any of you had spent time in an overseas in another country, you'll realize that they live their lives just a little bit differently than we live our lives. It isn't wrong, there's nothing wrong with it, it's just the way they do it. Well, being a follower of Jesus in the kingdom of God, to live the way God calls us to do, the way Jesus taught us to do in the gospels and in the letters, it's a way we live our lives. And how do we get there? Well, the beginning is repentance. And the Greek word here again is metanoia. And it's a change of mind. It's changing how we live our lives. And I think, you know, you, the classic example in the Bible is Paul's conversion. You know, he was persecuting the Christians and wanting to putting them in jail and everything. And all of a sudden he had a change. And he realized that, oh my gosh, 
This Jesus is for real. He really is the Son of God. He really has come back. And, and Paul completely changed how he lived his life. And, uh, and so it's turning away from a former consciousness. It's now recognized as wrong. In other words, things that we did before, we realized, oh my gosh, I shouldn't be doing those things. I need to change my ways. It's not an easy thing to do. If any of you have a, something that you don't think you should be doing, uh, maybe uh, you know, during Lent we always you know, give up some sort of a food or not, is you know, thinking about not doing that. But it's, it's more than that. It's a complete reorientation of one's whole life. And I would sit there and say, if, if you're using food and Lent as an example, it's changing your complete diet and continuing after Easter on that way. And it's not just sorrow for sin, but it is that reorientation. And since Vatican II, the connection between penance and social justice, in other words, becoming aware of the inequities, the problems in our world, those things that aren't good, these are the things we need to turn away from, to look in our society, look around us. What's wrong with our world? And what are we doing about it? Truly, love of God and love of nation, neighbor is the foundation of our, our, so, our, our spiritual journey during Lent is to take time to reflect on what is the world like, what is our neighborhood like, what's our family like, what are the things that we need to change. And Lent is a good time to start changing them, but I would argue if you can do it during Lent, don't stop on Easter, continue on after that. In this world, this really would be good news.